Hello, my hominoid followers. Yes, at this extinction. That's right, extinct. Now, some people say Yowies are not real. Some people say Bigfoots aren't real. And then they see one. And polar bears uh, walk around normally. And in Australia, they say that the drop bear is real, but it's only a joke which is a white polar bear on the bottle of Bundaberg rum, and you drink it and you drop off to sleep. Therefore, drop off with a polar bear, drop bear, that's how it got its name. Now here in Australia, actually on an island in Australia, people say that certain things are extinct. Actually, I'm going to back that up a little bit. Let's just say they say the thylacine is extinct. And yet, good old Neil down there in Tasmania with the thylacine society, he turned around and says, no, they're not. But scientists say, no, they can't be alive because we're scientists and we sit in our offices and our research laboratories and they don't get out there in the field. So this young guy, he decided to go out and he travelled to a Australian island and he discovered a extinct cockroach. Yes, rediscovered. And he's a scientist. So how can we dare say that the thylacine is extinct along with a lot of other things? It's the same as when they turned around and said a certain tree from prehistoric times no longer existed, and then they found it several years ago in the Royal National Park, just north of Sydney, down in a valley in between Sydney and Gosford, and had been presumably extinct for millions of years. So I don't ever believe scientists, not all the time. Let's have a look at this one. For 80 years, scientists rediscover a unique insect. Long thought to be extinct on Lord Howe Island's main island, the wood-feeding cockroach was discovered at the base of a lone banyan tree. A biology student at the University of Sydney discovered a gigantic, wingless, wood-eating cockroach that had been thought to be extinct since the 1930s and is only found on Australia's Lord Howe Island. For the first 10 seconds or so, I thought, no, that can't be, said Maxim Adams, an honours student at the University of Sydney's School of Biological Sciences under Professor Nathan Lowe. I mean, I raised the first rock beneath this enormous banyan tree. Well, there you go. And they said it was extinct. How good of them. Aren't they clever? But it took a young young guy to prove the old guys from, you know, the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years who's saying, oh, no, it does not exist. What do they do? Do they, all those old scientists walk around and stick their head in the sand like the proverbial ostrich or emu? And, uh, hmm. Anyway, let's not go there. And there it was. We spotted families of them, all beneath this one banyan, said senior scientist Nicholas Carlisle of the NSW Department of Planning and Environment, who was exploring North Bay with Adams. In reality, Maxim and Nathan stayed for the rest of the week, searching under every other banyan in North Bay but finding nothing. The rare Lord Howe Island wood-feeding cockroach, which was once prevalent throughout the archipelago, was thought to have gone extinct until rats arrived in 1918. Over the next few decades, searches turned up dispersed groups of distant cousins on two tiny offshore islands. The rediscovered group, however, is genetically separate from them. The survival is fantastic news because it has been more than 80 years since it was last seen. Lord Howe Island Board Chair Atticus Fleming said of the discovery, which was made in... So there you go. Scientists are so always correct. See, it's a great planet we live on. Just because mankind goes out there and destroys everything, or rats eat them all, everything tries to survive. So don't dare say that the thylacine is dead. Don't dare say that, oh, there's no such thing as Bigfoot hominoids, hominids, yowies, Bigfoots, and Seattle Light Jacks, and Howard from Maine don't exist. We all know they exist because we have to put up with them. But anyway, not everything here in Australia likes to kill you. It's just a wood cockroach. July 2022. 
Lord Howe Island is a truly remarkable area. It is older than the Galapagos Islands and home to 1,600 native invertebrate species, half of which are found nowhere else on the planet. These cockroaches are almost like our very own version of Darwin's finches, separated on little islands over thousands or millions of years developing their own unique genetics, he added. Although they are not adorable and cuddly, cockroaches perform an important part in the island's ecosystem by recycling nutrients, expediting wood degradation, and providing food for other species. As a result, experts have been researching the feasibility of returning them from the offshore islets to the main island. They don't have to anymore. There is still so much to learn, said Professor Lowe, head of the School of Life and Environmental Sciences Molecular Ecology, Evolution, and Phylogenetics Lab. We hope to look... Uh, would you like to take him out to the din dinner? Hmm. Learn more about how they survived by studying their habitat, behavior, and genetics through additional trials on the island. The wingless cockroach is 20 to 40 millimeters long and has a metallic body that ranges from reddish to black in hue. Paints the wood cockroaches, powerful burrowers that reside inside and eat on decaying logs in rainforests and open forests in northern and eastern Australia, are found in 11 different species. They have particular microorganisms in their intestines that aid in the digestion of cellulose and wood. Females give birth to nymphs, who live in families with the adults. However, the distinctive arthropods behave differently and may have been misnamed, despite its common name implying that they are wood-feeding cockroaches that burrow in rotting logs. We now believe they are more of a rock roach, with rocks forming an important component of their habitat, possibly due to their co-evolution alongside the ground foraging Lord Howe Island wooden, explained Carlisle of the DPE. The research with so isn't that marvelous how scientists do actually get it wrong yes yeah, so this good cockroach is meant to be extinct uh, anyway i'll be extinct there one day i'm getting on in age i just spotted this and i just thought you might like to see something else of interest as i say on my profile mr hominoid anytime anywhere anything and i just thought that was rather interesting what do you reckon? Scientists terrified in new discovery hidden in Australia. Uh, scientists, you're so smart. You know, there's an old saying, you know, more highly intelligent you are, the more simple the problem, they cannot, you know, they can't work it out because their brains are so complex they're so highly intelligent, something with common sense, just simplicity, they can't work it out because they try to make a mountain out of a molehill. Anyway, it's like me when I worked out where, where Theo Hayes disappeared. That's right. He simply got washed out in the current. Anyway, and yet there's an ex-copper there. Man, they couldn't work it out. And after I did my story... And then they come up there with an oceanographer and she said, yes, that's probably what happened. He got washed out the sea. She jumped on a surfboard. She went out on the same current and Theo Hayes was washed out the sea. And that's down there on my channel. Theo Hayes, the missing Belgian backpacker from 2019 at Byron Bay. Anyway, that's, anyway, that's another story. Let's have a look at this. Led by the University of Sydney in collaboration with the NSW Department of Planet and Environment. It is amazing this fascinating Australian species got rediscovered on Lord Howe Island after 80 years of being deemed extinct. Number three. Anyway, hmm. Actually, we'll get, I've got one more there for you. I'll let you have a look at this one, not this one here, another one. Coast to coast by 40,000 years ago. This generalization is not based on very much actual evidence, says Professor Prydox. It is probably more harmful than helpful in resolving exactly what happened to the dozens of large mammals, birds, and reptiles that were living on the continent when people first arrived. It is fascinating to think about these giant and terrifying megafauna animals roaming the Sahel Australian continent alongside the first humans, who are probably responsible for their demise. However, we can certainly be glad those giant four-legged kangaroos are not roaming around in Australia. Giant four-legged kangaroos. How would you like to meet that in your backyard? I mean, wouldn't you like that map that? Oh, Australia, land of mystery, wonders. I don't know. What do you reckon? Eh? How would you like to wake up with that in your bedroom? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Have you a new guinea anymore? 
Number 7. First true millipede discovered, new species with more than 1,000 legs found deep underground in Australia. This week's issue of Scientific Reports features the finding of the first millipede with more than 1,000 legs. Previously, no millipede with more than 750 legs had been discovered. Paul Merck and colleagues discovered the millipede 60 meters below in a mineral exploration drill hole in Australia's eastern goldfields province. It possesses 1,306 legs, more than any other animal, and is the... 1,306 legs? Oh, mate, imagine buying shoes for the body thing. Imagine if you had to go and buy micro shoes for it. Oh, my goodness me. First member of a new species known as Eumolypes Persephone. The millipede gets its name from the Greek prefix eu, the Latin word mill, and the Greek goddess of the underworld, Persephone. According to species relationships, E. Persephone is distantly related to the former record holder for the most legs, Alacme plenites, a Californian millipede species. According to the scientists, the vast number of segments and legs that have evolved in both species may allow them to generate pushing forces that allow them to pass through tight gaps in the soil environments in which they inhabit. The findings highlight the eastern goldfields province's biodiversity. To reduce the impact of mining on E. Persephone in this region, the authors recommend that... Now, see how they're doing gold? Now, that's not like Alaska, you know, they're going to dig it all up, moist it all out. They actually just go across the top of the soil and they pick the gold up. Yes, the gold is on top of the ground within the first, well, you know, half a metre, not even that. The gold is actually on the top because it's already been washed away. But anyway. That efforts be made to conserve its underground habitat. Number six. The Gimpy Gimpy Tree. Now, I'm choosing the Gimpy Gimpy tree because a friend of mine over there in America, uh, Cosmic Marauder Radio Free Jerry 88, he always says, I said, Marauder, Cosmic, come down to Australia. And he said, no, everything down there is trying to kill you. He said, I would never get into Australia because everything's trying to kill him. So, Marauder, this is for you. This plant appears to be an innocuous bush, yet it is a proud and vicious member of the Urticaceae family of nettles. It takes its name from the Australian town of Gympie. The name is derived from the Gubby Gubby people's indigenous language. It is indeed. Yes, you heard it right. Gubby Gubby. G U B B I. G U B B I. Gubby Gubby. It basically means fishing, fishing sort of people, uh, hunting around a waterway, basically. That's the area that they live in of Gympie. Um, it's a town set up between two different hills, and the river goes through the middle of it. It has high floods, and it's very close to the coast. And basically, Gubby Gubby means that sort of terrain. It's sort of... I know we have weird names over here in Australia, like the word Mawulumba means come sit by my campfire and land of many possums. So, yeah, one word can have two different meanings. You can say Mawulumba or Mawulumba. So, anyway, but Gubby Gubby, there you go. Anyway, let's go on. That's just me waffling on. Genus to the rainforests of northeastern Australia. The plant grows predominantly in clearings and along creek ways and footpaths. It is a highly poisonous plant with leaves that can cause one of the most egg. Now, I've actually got a photo of me standing next to one of these things way back in 1993. And I, and I said, oh, that's a stinging tree. People said, where? Now, look at the size of his face and look at the size of the leaf. So that's a one way of always recognising it is by the size of it, of the leaf. Now, have a good listen to how much agony. This thing doesn't sting you like a bee and goes away after a few hours. You're not going to believe, this is probably why poor old Cosmic Marauder Radio won't come down here to Australia. Organizing stings on the planet. 
Unfortunately, there is no antidote for this lethal sting. It's not simply excruciatingly unpleasant. It also has a super long lifespan. People that are stung by this monster may suffer for years. Many people commit suicide in order to escape the intolerable anguish. From a distance, the bush looks like any other plant. But, because of the plant's soft, fuzzy appearance, many people believe it is unobtrusive and even harmless. A single brush with its leaves, on the other hand, will give you immense grief and regret. The discomfort generated by the Gimpy Gimpy tree has been characterized as being electrified while being burned with hot acid at the same time. Now, if you don't like your mother-in-law, you can't buy one and get it, you know, sent over overseas, right? They won't let you, right? They won't let you buy it from Australia, okay? You don't like your mother-in-law or your father-in-law? No, sorry. Nobody knows when the anguish will end once it begins. It may take months or even years for the pain to subside. The shrubs can typically reach a height of three meters. The plant's heart-shaped leaves have serrated edges, microscopic filaments on the stem, and the leaves contain the poison that causes agony in your body. Each filament has a small bulb containing the poison. The bulb readily breaks off and becomes trapped in human flesh. To say the least, the anguish it produces is legendary. A.C. McMillan, a road surveyor from North Queensland, reported his pack horse being stung by the plant in 1866. The poor animal went insane from pain and died after only two hours. Ernie Ryder is another unfortunate man who came into contact with the Gimpy Gimpy tree. In 1963, the plant slapped him across the face, arms, and chest. According to Ernie, it seemed like a massive set of hands were attempting to crush his chest. For a few days, the pain was unbearable, and he couldn't do even the most basic tasks, but it gradually improved. But, in any case, the sting lasted about two years and hurt every time he took a cold shower. In severe situations, the lymph nodes beneath your arms may... Well, isn't marvelous? Eat a cold shower actually aggravated it. Hmm. ...a bulge and throb terribly for 1 to 24 hours. Researchers discovered that the Gimpy Gimpy poison is heat-resistant and chemically stable which means that even centuries-old dried-out preserved samples in the museum are still harmful and can sting you. You'd better hope you never come into contact with this extremely dangerous plant because there is still no antidote that can save you from it. Well, there we go. Just a little bit of fun about Australia. Uh, why you should come down here, go down and roll on a stinging tree and go find a great big long... One over 1,600 or whatever it was, legged uh, millipede. Oh, man. Who said Australia's not interesting? Anyway, for me, Mr. Omanoid, I hope you enjoyed that. Number five? No, I'm number one. Anyway, uh, credit goes to, what's his name? Future Bite, F-U-T-U-R-E, Bite. One million views eight days ago, scientists terrifying new discovery hidden in Australia. So if you want to go down and watch that, go down and have a look. Anyway, for me, Mr. Dominoy, just not going to do a copyright, just thought you might like to see that. So guys, Mac, I'm going to send you over a stinging tree for Christmas or a gimpy gimpy tree. And Jack, I'll send you over one there as well. So to all my American friends, now you know what you're going to get for Christmas. <laughs> Me, Mr. Ovenoid. See you later. God bless. Look after yourself. Take care. Remember, fight depression. Try and keep yourself happy and just get on there with life. Enjoy it. You live you live live less time than the time you are when you're dead. Because you live you are dead longer than what you are alive. So don't ever forget that. So make the most out of life as possibly as you can. That sort of make mad sense with my mad dyslexic speech. Sorry about that. Yes, I was attacked once and I got brain injury. So anyway, my little scrambled up brain. But just because I don't talk right, it doesn't mean I'm stupid. That's right, because it was inflicted on to me. But anyway, I still try to be happy. And by the way, yes, the guy that did attack me, he went back to his mother, attacked her twice, and she still took him back in, and she's in a walking frame. And he still attacked her. What an asshole. But anyway, that's just life. Move on, get on with life, and have a good life. Good time while you can. You only live once. 
Enjoy it.